and welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how incredibly excited I am to bring to you somebody that I've been following for quite some time. And guys, y'all give it up for Clint Pulver. He is an Emmy winner, one of the most sought after leadership speakers in the world, in, in my opinion. Um, and also, he is the author of a best selling book. I love it here. Uh, in fact, one of my favorite books, as you can tell, I'm kind of a book nerd, but this is indeed one of my favorite books. I've got multiple pages dog geared. Guys, y'all give it up for Clint Pulver. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. You got quite the fan club. I can hear him clapping for you. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Clint, I'd love to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do with us. Yeah. So, uh, like you mentioned, I'm a professional speaker, a husband, a father. We just had a brand new little baby boy. So that's super exciting in our lives right now. And yeah, very, very inspired by helping organizations create places that people never want to leave. And how awesome. do we create, uh, yeah, just a workplace where people don't just survive at work, but they actually thrive. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. That is so, and such a valuable conversation in, in today's environment where there's people are checking out and, and moving on because just the culture of that environment isn't what it could be. So, and again, I, lo I love your book. Guys, y'all make sure you grab a copy of this book because it's absolutely amazing. Um, but Clint, what I love to do is I love to connect with inspiring leaders and take a peek behind the curtain to see what inspires those leaders. And I reached out to you and I asked you, you know, what are three, what are a couple of things that inspire you? You sent me three great points and I absolutely love these. So I wanna jump on the first one and you kind of alluded to it briefly, family family inspires you. So share with us a little bit what that means to you. Why does your, why does your family become your inspiration? Yeah, I think everything that I do and the reason why I do it is, is for my family. Um, you know, for, for me, I, I, I always wanted to have a family and I think the responsibility, uh, with having a family and, and for, for me is, is to provide right for that family. And so, to, to, to build a brand and to build a business that really allowed me to do three things. It was, and I think this serves my family, is is do something that I was passionate about. I call it the three Ps, passion, purpose, and the ability to provide. So something that I innately loved and drumming and music is always something I've loved. Research is something I've loved. Um, speaking is something I've always enjoyed. So I, playing to my strengths, that's been that's been a, a good thing. And I think that's helped me to come home to my family, a happy dad and a happy husband, which I think creates a better and, and more happy home. And then the second aspect was purpose, the ability to just do something bigger than yourself. Uh, yeah, that gives a sense of fulfillment in life. Um, and my family is is a big part of that purpose. And every time I get up there on that stage, it's not it's not for me. It's for the audience and the clients that I'm serving, and it's for my family, because through that purpose and helping the world to be a better place, right? I, my mantra is: it's not about being the best in the world. It's about being the best for the world, and that delves into purpose. And then that that third component is the ability to provide, yeah. and you know, to provide in a way that's sufficient for you. Everybody's got a different ideal on what that means to be able to provide. Uh, what is that dollar amount? What is that figure? What is that lifestyle? And there really is no right answer. But for me, the ability to provide for my family in a way that is sufficient for us is a powerful dynamic. And so yeah. my family is the fuel behind those three P's, passion, purpose, and the ability to provide. Oh, wow. I love that. The, the three P's, passion, purpose, and the ability pr to provide. And you do these things and you, you've found your passion. You've, you've kind of executed on your purpose and these two things allow you to provide for your family and you do these things so that you can be for your family. Uh, and, and I think that's so amazing. A lot of us, we get out of order where it, our focus becomes work and we forget about family. And I think that's, when you do things in the right order, family first and then work, I think your work becomes that much better. And I, and I love that you've, you've created that order in your three P's, passion, purpose, and the ability to provide. I think that really does create a, a, a stronger you as a leader and you can 
inspire others better and bigger. Absolutely. Yeah, you're spot on. I love it. I love it. You know, Clint, the, the, the second thing that you talked about or that you added on here was drums. Drums inspires you. And I, and I know just simply because I'm a fan of yours and I followed you, I, I know there's kind of a, a, a story yeah. about this, but tell us in your own words, what does it mean for drums? Why, why do drums inspire you? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, but they've been a part of my life for 24 years. And the there's something when, when you find someone that is that's in the zone, right? That does that that's aligned with something that you just go, man, I, they were born to do that, right? Mark Twain was the one that said that there's two important days in a person's life, the day they're born and then the day they figure out why. And I think when you watch somebody doing something that they were born to do that's powerful that is a cool thing that is an alignment in someone's life and soul that many people strive to find many people haven't found yet in their life and drums was one of those aspects for me that i was lucky enough to find and when i sit down behind that drum set um I don't know. I go to a different place. My mind goes to a different place. It's, it's a, it's a whole lot cheaper than therapy, and, and it does the say it does the same thing. I, I love it. The sound, um, and and the movement and what it just what what goes on in a drummer's brain when they are playing is insane, and I can't even spell it out on paper, but I know what it feels like, and I know what that looks like, and. I don't know. There's just something innately that's always just sparked my heart when, I mean, you sit down on that bass drum and I'm in an, an arena to perform or speak in front of 5,000, 10,000 people and you hit that bass drum and the whole, all the rafters shake. I mean, the seat, yeah. the floor, like that's just, I just love it. I just love it. And I love what the drums represents in music. The drums are ultimately what moves people. It, you know, yes, there's the singer, yes, there's the bass player, yes, there's the guitar player, but it's the drums. <laughs> Excuse me. It's Bless the you. drum. It's the drums that really is the foundation. It is. It is what you what you groove to. It's yeah. what you move your head to. Uh -huh. So much of the essence of music is found in the rhythm. It's mm. found in the pulse, and that's what the drums create. Yeah. And, and I can see how that inspires you. My, my, my youngest son loves to drum and he, you know, he hits his drums and he just, he goes, like you said, he gets into a zone when he's on the drums and, and it's just, there's, he's a different person and he's in it. And I love it. I love watching him do that. But I agree with you. I think the drums creates, you know, not only do you, it's, is it audio? Not only does it keep the beat, but you can feel the drums, you can feel the rhythm, you can feel it more than you can hear it. And I think it really does create, and I love how you said it shakes the rafters and it gets gets people moving. Yeah. And I, I can see that as a tool. It's cheaper than therapy, of course. Um, <laughs> but I can see that as a tool to be used to get people moving, just like tools that we use, other kinds of tools that we can inspire people or tools that we can use to encourage people. I, I love how you've you've connected with the drums and there's such a great story. And if, got, if guys, if you have not heard the background story of how Clint got, got, kind of got introduced to the drums by a teacher, absolutely incredible. It's just a wonderful story and it's, it's an encouraging, inspiring story. So guys, make sure you check that out. But I love how you kind of connected to the drums and you use it as a tool to inspire not only you, but the people around you. And I, and I truly love that. Now, Glenn, you shared one other thing that inspires you and that's aviation. So this is kind of unique. I mean, this is beyond just flying on a passenger airline, but tell us how aviation inspires you. Yeah, before anything, uh, you know, before there were drums, before there was speaking, before there was performing, my heart, all my first love in life was always helicopters and aviation yeah I, I just you talk about things that you're innately drawn to or that you feel like you were born to do and i just there was something about the ability uh to lift off of the earth and to go wherever you wanted and to just i don't know is a magic carpet ride wow and that's what helicopters always represented for me 
And I, I, I'll never forget the best day of my life as a young child was when I got my, my first drum set and I, did, I went on my first helicopter ride all in the same day. Wow. And uh, I just that, that moment when, I, when we took off and uh, I don't know, I just, I'll never forget it. And that was uh, the day that I was like, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. And I graduated from high school as a private pilot and I started out flying fixed wing aircraft. And then I went and did a, a two year study abroad mission for my church. And I came home and at this point I was 21 and I went to go renew my driver's license and I couldn't pass the vision test. And I was diagnosed with an eye disease called keratoconus. Mm-hmm. And my it's a, it's a degenerative eye disease, meaning it just gets worse and worse and worse. And as a as a 21 year old kid, my eyes were as bad as an 87 year old's. Wow. And you know, so there I was as a young person who literally had my eye on the sky, and then in a moment everything crashed. And the doctor said, "You'll you'll be blind by the age of 31 or 32." And then he asked, you know, he asked the question that many of us have been asked in our lives, what do you want to do when you grow up? You know, what's the plan? And I remember I said, I, I want to fly. Like, there's nothing that's more important to me than that. And he said, it'll never happen for you, ever. And he said, you got to pick another career. And I, I totally transitioned. My whole life changed. I went through a really hard, dark time of not having passion or purpose or even the thought and the idea of how I was going to provide for a future family. Yeah, And um, as someone who believes in God and has a strong faith in that, um, I believe that sometimes good things fall apart so that better things can fit together. And this was something that fell apart in my life. But in doing so, um, I believe God used me in ways that were much more impactful and influential than I ever would have been as a helicopter pilot. Mm-hmm. And ended up going into the medical field was miserable there, uh, hated that job, jumped into this, the world of professional speaking. There's a lot of details within that story. <laughs> but anyways, after I graduated high school, they came out with a new eye procedure called cross-linking. Mm-hmm. And um, it, was a, it was a procedure to help people with my eye disease to prevent them from going blind. And I was one of the first human trials to ever have that procedure done. And they called me up and they did the procedure on my right eye. And then six months later, they they did the procedure on my left eye. And it 100% stopped the progression of the disease. And so I wasn't going, I wasn't going to go blind, which was great. Yeah. But a lot of the damage had been done. And two years ago, they just came out with a new technology called scleral lenses. And for the first time ever in 18 years, I now can see 2020. And um, this year, three months ago, we just bought a helicopter. And how crazy is that, right? Um, yeah. And so reigniting and jumping back into that world. And I've, I've wanted to create a, a foundation called Dream Machines that gives uh, underprivileged and just uh, uh, kids with disabilities their first flight experience. And so we're just again striving to be the best for the world. And uh, again, I think some good things fell apart so that better things can fit together. Yeah. And it's probably been a full circle moment and it's, has been a very inspiring part of my life. Wow. Wow. That, uh, what an incredible story. And, and, I, and, and I love how you talked about it. You know, good things fall apart so better things can happen. But it truly is, you know, it's, it, as, you know at, it's in God's timing. You know, yeah. he's, he put this passion in your heart. He delayed it. So that you could do all these other things to inspire people brings you to a point where you can find that passion again and connect with that passion and you can do more with it than just by yourself and you're creating these additional things and i think there's such a deep deep lesson in there that even if we have a goal if we have a lesson or an inspiration that we want to you know accomplish if it gets delayed it's okay Hang on to it. Hang on to it. You'll you'll get to it eventually if you just stay persistent. Don't don't lose sight of it. You'll yeah. get there. I cool. love that story. What an incredible story. Yeah, it's 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 been a very inspiring part of life, and um, yeah, yeah, we're very we're very blessed and grateful for that. I'm grateful that I can still see. That's a, that's a big amen. Blessing. 
That's yeah. that's fantastic. Hey, Clint, I, it's been so wonderful talking to you. We're, we're right at the end of our time of our conversation here. But before we wrap up, I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought with us. Yeah, I I would I would I would tell everybody to remember the essence of what it means to truly live in this world and not just exist. Mm-hmm. Oscar Wilde was the person that said to live is the rarest thing in the world for most people merely exist. And tomorrow is never promised and ultimately what we have is today. And I think at the end of our lives, because no matter what we do, none of us are getting out of this life alive, right? That's just part of the deal. I think you'll be surrounded in those moments with with three things. You'll you'll be surrounded by the woulda, shoulda, couldas, Mm -hmm. or you'll be surrounded by the do it, did it, done it. And I I think life is too short to have uh, all the woulda, shoulda, couldas. And so... I guess the, the the point I'm trying to make is today, give yourself permission to just dream a little bit, mm-hmm. to, to, to tinker, to do the things that ultimately allow you to have a sense of passion, purpose, and the ability to provide. Because I think that is the ingredients to helping us live in this world, not just exist. And yeah. do so, man, what a great story you get to write. And you, you're the author of your own story. Correct. I Correct. love it. Yes. Clint, what a fabulous ending to our conversation here. It's just, it's been amazing. I'm honored that I get a chance to connect with you and share share you with, with my audience as well. Guys, make sure you grab a copy of this book. Get an extra copy, share it with a friend. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, so many great stories in there. Um, again, one of my favorite books. Clint, thank you again. And we will see you all on the next episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. Thank you, guys.